Okay, so um, a couple of things that um, we need to touch base on before we go uh, any further in, in terms of actually talking about uh, dynamic patterns. Um, again, uh, we hope that you were able to participate in our Intro to Grasshopper webinar or review that content online before today. Um, but we need to, we're going to be using Grasshopper, so we need to know what it is. And all it is is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino's 3D modeling tools. So really all that means is that we can define logical relationships between multiple design parameters, subsequently defining a parametric model. Okay, so within um, Grasshopper, these are the set of topics that we're going to be looking at today during the webinar. Now first we're going to start with an introduction to patterns, what they are, um, and how we can start to use them. And then we're going to start looking at how we can create our own custom patterns. But then going to uh, switch over into working with fields and looking at fields of influence across a space. And that will set up the stage for us to do a series of exercises on attractors and expressions. And that's really where we're going to spend the majority of our time. That's how we can look at creating variable patterns across a collection of elements and um, one that is characterized by difference across distance. So really, if we're looking at uh, natural or physical or mathematically derived patterns, attractors is a really great place for us to start. So that's where we're going to uh, be spending a half of the webinar today. Okay, so um, the webinar is called Dynamic Patterning, and um, really we need to kind of um, talk about how we're going to understand patterning in the first place. Um, for today and for the webinar, we're going to be talking about patterning as being included as including three elements. First, we're going to have a grid. This is our substrate. It's the thing that we start from. We're then going to apply some sort of influence to the elements on that grid, and then subsequently after that, we'll then um, uh, do an action, right? So one example, if we have a rectangular grid of points and we have two attractors, right, and then we subsequ subsequently draw circles at every point whose radius is based on the proximity to the attractors, we have patterning. Grid, influence, and action. Okay, so let's start with exercise 1-0. Uh, this is introduction to patterns. And um, in order to begin working with patterns in Grasshopper, we have to define a couple of key terms. So patterning is grid plus influence plus action. So we need to start with grids. A grid is a data structure consisting of a two-dimensional ordered set of elements. We'll think about this as a grid of points. And the way we're going to start working with patterns is that we're going to be working with Booleans. And these are just simply um, stating whether something is true or false. Is this condition true or false, or should we keep it? And with a Boolean, we're going to then be able to uh, generate our first pattern by doing an action called culling. So this is going to be removing a specific item or sequence of items from a list using a repeating pattern. Okay, with those basic uh, terminologies in place, let's bounce over to uh, Rhino. And um, go ahead and open Rhino and um, type in Grasshopper in the uh, command line. And your Grasshopper window uh, should then open on top of Rhino. And Grasshopper, of course, is a plugin for Rhino. So it's going to sit on top of our viewports here. And the way I like to set up my screen is to have kind of half of it um, filled with the Grasshopper window and the canvas, and half of it uh, corresponding with the viewports in Rhino. Okay, so um, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, for each of the exercises today, is we're going to actually open them. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to open the first file that we gave you called 1-0, Intro to Patterns. And each time that we do an exercise, we're going to open it up, see what we're going to do, um, get a kind of general overview of what we're going to try and achieve, and then we're going to go back through and build it from scratch. All right, so um, here's our first file that we're going to develop. There's not too many objects here that we have to actually um, put into the canvas. Um, so this should go pretty quickly. So I'm going to select all my objects, delete, and as we go, I'm going to be saving working versions of every file. So this is dash W. You do save as. And this is going to be my original file, dash W. And these working files are going to be uh, sent to you 
after the conclusion of the webinar. Um, so if we do any kind of uh, slightly different technique uh, within the context of the exercise files, uh, you'll have both the original and the, um, the one we did together uh, as a reference. All right, so intro to patterns dash W. Okay, so all we have here is an empty canvas, and we're going to go ahead and start by creating a grid, defining a set of trues and falses, which we call booleans, and then look at how we can then uh, call the grid elements so that we uh, see a resulting pattern. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a grid. So let's go to the vector tab, grid sub tab, and you can choose just about any one of the grids. I, I suggest we start simple, and let's go for a square grid. All right, so if we put that into the canvas, we're going to see here in the Rhino viewport, if I hide my grid lines, we're going to see a collection of cells, five by five squares, and um, the original uh, plane that is the origin of our grid, the kind of starting point of our grid. Okay, so what that means is that this object, which is light gray, um, is working. It has some predefined default values inside of each one of these inputs. So now we get the default, and we want to be more specific. So the first thing we want to do is define what P is. If we put our mouse over P, you'll see here it says base plane for grid, and currently it's the world X, Y. So let's go to the vector plane tab. And here we have um, the kind of three Cartesian uh, oriented planes, x, y, x, z, and y, z. You can choose e any of these three. I'm going to choose x, y because I'm in top view, and that's how I want to work. So I'm going to use the x, y plane, and this is going to be here our origin of our grid. So I'm going to take this object, and I'm going to add labels. Um, a quick note, if you don't already um, have the, your views in Grasshopper set up this way, I'd recommend you go to view, sorry, display, draw icons. I'm going to be using icon view and then using groups to provide labels so that you can very easily understand what exactly we're using in terms of the objects uh, on the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to take my XY plane and I'm going to do edit group. Right click the group, and this is going to be my origin, also known as the XY plane. All right, so here we have the XY plane. It's located at, this is going to be the origin of my grid, and we can go ahead and plug that into P, right? Nothing's going to change because the XY plane was the uh, default value here, and we've just replaced it with the exact same thing. But if we wanted to say, start our grid over here, all we'd have to do is right-click O and specify that we want to have a new starting point or origin of our plane. Okay, so let's go through the rest of the inputs. We have S is the size, size of the grid cells. EX is the number of grid cells in the base uh, X direction. And Y is the number of grid cells in the base plane Y direction. Okay, um, so one more note. If you look at the icon at the left of the uh, pop-up window here, it's going to be consistent with the type of params, primitive inputs that the object is asking for. So S is a number, it's asking for the size, which can be a floating point number. EX and EY are integers. So let's go ahead and um, let's create a slider to control our size. So I'm going to go to params, input, number slider. And this is going to give me a, a slider which is default between 0 and 1. And um, that's all fine and dandy, but I think I want to be more specific. So let's right-click the slider, say Edit. And we're going to say that we want to start with a minimum size of 1 and a maximum size of, let's say, 5. Maybe I reduce the number of zeros. And let's call this our grid size. So this is the name of the slider and this will be visible as the label whenever we hit OK. So OK, connect S. Now we have control over the grid size. And we need two more sliders for EX and EY. So a shortcut for creating sliders that are between a certain set of values 
is we probably want to go from, let's say, 3 to, I don't know, 30 in the X and Y. So let's double click on the canvas. And we're going to use a shortcut, which is says, okay, the minimum number of the minimum number for input that I want is 3. The current value I want to specify is 20. And the maximum I want to specify is 40. Right? So between 3 and 40 with a current value of 20. And those are just 3. Um, I've typed out 3 less than 20 less than 40. Hit Enter. And now we have a slider that is specified with those settings. So here's my EX slider by renaming it. And I'm going to copy paste, specify EY, connect them up, and now I have control over the extents of my grid. All right, perfect. So I'll just align this and um, let's group our object here so we know what this is. This is our square grid, so the other shortcut for grouping is Control G. So there's group, right click the uh, group object and say that we want to define this as the rectangular grid. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, hopefully everyone's uh, following along just fine. And as a reminder, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to drop them into the questions window through the GoToWebinar interface and we'll, um, we'll help you out. All right, so um, now we're here at the rectangular grid, right? And let's take a look at what we're getting as an output from this object. C is asking for the grid, or it's giving us the grid cell outlines, and P are the points at the grid corners. Okay, so let's start with um, taking the points at the grid corners. Now, the way this object is working is that it's showing us a preview of C, and not P. So we want to see our points, right? We want to make them visible in the viewport. So one way to do that is to grab a point container from params geometry. Here's point. And we'll plug in P into that. And this is just to kind of uh, to temporarily visit and um, to make visible our point collection. So I'm going to right click the rectangular grid and say that I want to turn the preview off. All right, so now we're left with our grid of points. The first part of creating our pattern is, is complete, right? We now have a grid of points, and now, um, we just now need to start to decide how we want to influence them. Okay, um, so this here, uh, if we were to group it and give it labels as we are doing everything else, this is our collection of grid points. Okay, great. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we said that we wanted to control the pattern based on Boolean values, trues and falses. So if we were to look at this collection of points, we want to say, I want to go from uh, starting at this point, going up in the columns, I want to keep, remove, keep, remove, keep, remove. Or alternatively, I could say keep, keep, remove, keep, keep, remove. All right, so let's go ahead and define that. Uh, what that uh, collection of trues and falses is going to be. So let's go to params input and grab the panel. And I'm going to double click it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is uncheck this box here, which says multi-line data. That's going to allow the panel to be understood as a list of items, as opposed to one big long uh, collection of text. So I'm going to uncheck that. And um, this is going to be True, false, false. All right, so these are our Boolean values. And you can put in true, false, or true, true, false, whatever collection of Booleans you want, so long as they're separated by a carriage return. All right, so hit OK. And now we have here our collection of Booleans. So I'm going to right click and label this as our Booleans. Great. OK. So now we need to use these Booleans to define which of these grid points we're going to keep or remove. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to start working with this collection of points as a set. So if we go to the Sets tab under Sequence, here we have the object called Call Pattern. 
So let's drop that in to the canvas and see what we get. And this object removes elements in a list using, using a repeating bit mask. All right, so a bit mask is just our list of trues and falses here from our Booleans that are in our panel. And the list is the list of objects we want to uh, actually call or remove. Okay, so true means we're going to keep it, false means it goes away. So let's connect our grid points into L, and P is going to come from our Booleans. Now, if you, if you connected those, you might realize that nothing changed in our viewport, and that has to do with the previews. So we want to make sure that we go back to the original grid points, select them, right-click, and say preview off. All right, so um, now we only see the points that are kept from our collection of original grid points. The other ones that were here have been removed.